It was a teamwork. It required effort and it involved different depart several departments of the uh, university and institutions. And I'm very pleased that events like this can take place <clears throat> represent and um, reflecting different perspectives on a specific subject. Um, I do not want to go into details about the topic because I don't know, I don't know it in depth, so I leave the floor to the experts for the topic. But I'd like to underline the spirit of this initiative and other initiatives that are taking place in our university the Pontifical University Regina Apostolorum, and I'd like to mention a reference document, um, which is number 19, where you can find the value. And uh, this document says that values have to find answers to the anxieties of modern humans. That's why the Pontifical University promotes the dialogue with the current culture on uh, topics and problems uh, of the contemporary age. So the topic of today's event <clears throat> is um, a current topic and in its um, an in-depth analysis that's why the title of uh, the um, of the conference is a question so we wonder if we will be able to use uh, blockchain nft and cryptocurrencies ethically there are still quite new subjects unknown for many but they will impact greatly the economic life and also the social life of all of us. The quality of this impact will depend on the way these technologies will be used. That's why I think it's useful to understand what they are and then um, and then it will be time to wonder if it's possible to shape them ethically for the common good and for the integral development of people. Pope Benedict XVI in Caritas and Veritate uh, referred to something interesting, I'd like to mention it, on the necessity that there is a relation between uh, economy and ethics. He says that <clears throat> The independence of ec economy has pushed humans to use economic instruments in a harmful way. So we need ethical references in economy because not having uh, ethical references could result into lack of justice and a disturbance of um, relations uh, in social life. So we don't want to condemn anything, but we would like to analyze these new technologies and um, understand what our orientation, what our perspective on this topic is or may be. Uh, the fact that this topic is dealt with in a pontifical, pontifical uh, university is uh, full of sense because as Pope Francis said, um, and wrote in his recent book, uh, which was published just yesterday, the Pope says that it's fundamental and it's a specific task of the Catholic uh, academic uh, entities, so also pontifical universities, to develop a new epistemology in order to integrate all the um, all the sectors of knowledge, so it's necessary. It's almost an obligation for us to have a dialogue and to evaluate and assess these new realities, which are a challenge for society. And so we have to give a contribution in this sense. And I really hope that this uh, event today can be a real and factful contribution to this challenge. And I hope this is just the first of several initiatives on this, in this perspective that will be developed 
um, to foster dialogue and interdisciplinary approach to contemporary topics. So I thank you once again for your participation and your presence. I'd like to um, thank the rector of the University of Rome, who will uh, greet you and start this event. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? <clears throat> it's a great pleasure to greet uh, on behalf of the Pontifical University Regina Apostolorum all the uh, institutions and participants of this uh, uh, event. Uh, we will we will investigate the ethical aspects on new forms of uh, economic and financial transactions like blockchain, NFT, or um, cryptocurrencies. We know that this uh, Second Vatican Council stated that economic activity is positive in itself and it's characterized by as by a domain of man on nature, by the multiplication and intensification of relations, and by the interdependence between people and groups, and by a positive uh, intervention of public powers. But we all know also that financial and economic life has diversified over time, and it's very complex. So. It has um, very specific characteristics. We have a document of the Congregation on the Doctrine of Faith titled Economici Pecuniari Questionis, in, published in 2018. And they tes it testifies the interest of, a of the church in economy and the finance, financial world. These topics require regulation of their functioning and also an ethical foundation, ensuring the wealth and the quality of life that the economic mechanisms alone cannot ensure. So there are two necessities that uh, the document I was referring to uh, asks for having uh, for regulating these complex human activities in an ethical way. So on one side, the regulation, and the second is the ethical parameters. Today's conference will deal with the ethical dimension of these topics, of these new uh, topics. But in order to give uh, an, an ethical dimension, we need to know the topic. Uh, we need a technical knowledge. So it's um, the, these topics are quite new, so we need to be informed in order to assess them. And so the ethical considerations uh, will then be the foundations for future regulations on such activity. Today's conference will uh, deliver an overview on ethical approaches, and we will have Professor Farrell and Ryan talking about um, these topics, and then we will have uh, Professor Baraldi, Professor Traficante on monetary economics and cryptocurrencies. And then uh, we will talk about uh, DLT, uh, by, uh, thanks to Professor Fazio. And then we will have um, Professor Ferrero Colognola. We will, have, we will have also the speech of uh, Davide Baraldi um on the protect on the use of nft to protect uh, the cultural heritage as well as other experiences from other parts of the world 
We also have Major Carlo della Gatta, uh, uh, and he will talk about the activities to combat the use of cryptocurrencies for illegal purposes and to avoid um, money laundering. So the uh, all the landscape that we have ahead of us is highly interesting. And some we have. Um, we have a lot of uh, possibilities to explore. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, this landscape entails also ethical risks. This economic activities, as I was saying, are in, it, in themselves positive if in, uh, is experienced in an ethical dimension. And when um, we also need to focus um, on technical scientific uh, knowledge uh, in order to um, have a judgment on this kind of economic activities. Economy need ethics to function properly and without an adequate vision of humankind, you cannot develop a practice that it's not up to uh, the common good and the ethical dimension of the human life. We want to uh, analyze the complexity of the current situation in order to address the human activities for the well-being of people. Every initiative organized in this sense as today's um, is a contribution for the integration of uh, several disciplines and to develop um, the integral human development. So we encourage events like this of today, and I hope that they will Pro, uh, be promoted also in the future by this university, but also other universities, because mutual mutual cooperation will be fruitful for all and for the ethical well-being of our society and for building a, a more sustainable future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. And a round of applause to our rector. Well, I'm Pietro Sacco. I'm a journalist of Avenire, uh, which is the magazine of CE. We have started a good cooperation uh, with this university, and I'm in charge of uh, the um, economic editorial stuff. I started to write in 20 in 2007 when uh, just after Lemon Brothers collapsed. So I immediately had to describe the crisis. Then there was a recovery and then there was COVID. So I'm specialized in moments of crisis, so to say. I found very interesting the idea of analyzing in depth um, the blockchain, the cryptocurrencies, because the, uh, it's a highly trendy topic and it was unthinkable. Um, <clears throat> their popularity was unthinkable just a, just a little time ago. And this is justified by the huge amount of money managed by the central banks, often with specula speculative activities. And so it's hard also um, for, for us as Catholics to justify a financial world which is uh, projected towards speculation. So we, there are a lot of problems connected with uh, NFT cryptocurrencies, but at the same time, these new uh, financial tools also offer some new uh, economic development perspectives that can be uh, applied in an ethical manner. And that is something that uh, we will try to analyze today. I would ask Father Ryan to open with the philosophic uh, speech. Um, I wanted to have philosophy in the title. Uh, 
And money is something very ancient. And even if cryptocurrency is uh, sort of a new form for money, money is a very ancient tool. So I give the floor to Professor Ryan. When Roberto mentioned that we would be talking about this topic, I thought uh, of linking the idea of Bitcoin with George Sermon and his book, The Philosophy of Money. Because I remember uh, when I studied this author, some ideas that I think are useful to frame our research on this topic. Simmel, in the 1900, so in a completely different world, he said that some general problems do not have precise answers, but we need to find answers. We need to look for answers, and blockchain is one of those um, questions. He said that the economic science cannot tell everything that's behind economy. And I think this is also important. What is behind blockchain, algorithms, th there are people. So for him, this is one of the first ideas that he developed. I'm, I will move quite qu quickly. <coughs> he said that the topic of money is not just universal, but also serious. And I like this idea uh, that um, it's mentioned at the end of the slide. Make it, it's one of those points of the surface of our life, which is not ideal. But where it's possible to draw a plumb line to, um, to, to uh, draw from the most, from the deepest uh, levels of our life. I think that I had these ideas to to introduce what's behind the topic that we will deal with today. And Simmel also, in his analysis, talked about alienation. We know that money is one of the things that can alienate. What does alienation mean? Uh, since Hegel, Marx, especially Hegel, said that alienate means having an instrument and in, in, in the production of the instrument, I put the soul in that instrument, but in order to, uh, to have the soul enriched by the project, whereas when we have an alienation, the soul is not enriched by the product. And the product is like a living thing. So the instrument is something that we cannot do without. So we, we become slave of the instruments. And those were his ideas that I found useful to remind. This idea of alienation was also uh, mentioned by John Paul II in his Centesimus Annus. So I think I think it's useful to repeat uh, these concepts in the frame of, framework of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. This is something I wanted to share with you. And before going to some considerations, I also like to recall when we talk about uh, um, ethics, uh, what Aristotle said, we, uh, we trust, uh, we study ethics to become good, not to know what good is. And this should be the spirit of today's event as well, and of our analysis. 
myself uh, can I become can I improve as a person do I feel committed in this topic not just as an academic representative but as a person am I concerned about people first of all do, do I want to understand and is it a challenge for me when we talk about ethics it's always like having a mirror um, <clears throat> in front of us and admitting that we are part of the problem and we are also part of the solution so this analysis today's analysis has to improve us and i'm saying this as a priest As the rector said, we need to know this world. Um, we have this picture of some of the characteristics of the blockchain that we will need to analyze in depth. Those are some uh, social goods of blockchain. <clears throat> there is an attempt to have them summarized in a picture, all the positive features of blockchain. There are also other positive effects, digital identity, assets tracking, and so on. But there is also a but. <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to go into details but the control over people can also entail um, risks and dangers so if if there is a controversy there is no one regulating and solving the, the, the discrepancy so what happens in case of controversies for me, for example, it's important to, to understand this. The technology is, will change reality. And then we also have an environmental impact. What can we think? Uh, on an ethical point of view. I found this article um, talking about uh, the blockchain ethical design. This is a way towards a system uh, based on exams and proposals. Now I'm going to mention a quote by a scientist. Technology is not good and it is not even evil or neutral. So there's a need for intentionality during the phase of design. It means that when it means that we have to think about where we're going and this is also the basis of ethical design we have to focus on um, a few key points technology depends on the users this is the first point the fact that it depends on the users doesn't mean that technology can be used by whoever for whatever purpose. Technology is not like a gun. But of course, it can be harmful for people. 
So having said that, we have to try to focus on the results of certain innovations. This may stem from the um, from utilitarianism. It is like when uh, Alice in Wonderland had to decide which way she had to take. And at the beginning, she was looking at her cat and looking the direction the cat took. And uh, Alice asked the cat, where are you going? And the cat said, I don't know. So we always have to think about what we want for the final users and for the society throughout a certain um, innovation. So we must be able to decide whether the effects of technology are good or bad. The second key point is the identification of problems. These problems may um, hamper the way forward. Instead, if, if I mean, if instead you can foresee the problems that may arise, you won't disrupt the pathway you have taken. If I have to work to walk 600 kilometers, I should think about things that may happen. I can anticipate problems that may arise and possible solutions. So what is the kind of approach we want to uh, adopt in dealing with uh, possible problems that may arise? The kind of approach depends also on our individual perception. Another interesting fact I would like to highlight is related to the fact that technology the current technology uh, doesn't provide for uh, taking a step back, and this can be applied to all fields. An ethical approach must be uh, the basis of each new phase and uh, must be the basis for each uh, new technology. There are different types of uh, ethical theories. They are as old as the ancient Greeks. And we could discuss on the type of ethical theory we would like to assess the problems that we have to deal with. Pope Benedict XVI said that ethical, that, that ethics is a hot topic nowadays. And uh, it is um, a topic that embraces all the fields of the modern society. Social sciences, science, uh, the banking system. Academia is, um, is debating a great deal about the importance of ethics in all fields. Ethics is in fact taught at several universities, including Harvard. 
In fact, at Harvard, there's a course in ethics. So Benedict the Sixteenth uh, wondered about the type of ethics that is to be applied to uh, different fields. So in order to answer to this question, we should think about the moral needs of the people and the effects um, certain circumstances may have on people and also on other fields such as the um, economical one, such as the economic one. So today, ethic, as we've said before, is a hot topic in economy, finance and uh, uh, within corporations. This process is appreciated and it should be um, highlighted. However, there is a need for a discerning activity because if the ethics is uh, applied, ethics may be the um, cover for a certain uh, critical decisions. So a set of principles to determine the type of ethics that is going to be used is to be promoted. The um, social doctrine of the church provides for different standards in order to make a decision about the type of ethics so that, it, that has to be applied. In thinking about this topic, there's an image that came to my mind. It's the Salomon throne. We need a Salomon. He was famous because of the, his wisdom. And apparently his throne had different staircases and in order to go up those staircases um, he had to meet with different animals and those animals reminded him of several things the lion reminded him of strength the uh, bull reminded him of uh, of staying standstill, then uh, he would meet the lamb and the wolf, the goat and the leopard, the eagle and the peacock, the folk and the, the hen. And at the top of the staircase, there was a dove. And when he reached the dove, he felt like he had reached the apex. He would sit below the dove. And this is where he understood that there was a need for synthesizing different strengths in order to reach harmony. Thank you. Cryptocurrencies are new, and in fact, the church hasn't had the possibility to position itself. However, cryptocurrencies are so popular nowadays that as, a Cath as Catholics, so we should think about how we use these tools. Father Farrell is now going to um, give us his view about how a Catholic should look at cryptocurrencies. Father Farrell, you have the floor. A Bitcoin is 
morally evil. This is what Nobel Prize Domilotto uh, said in 2013. Should the Catholic think the same? Well, we can't give a straightforward answer until we will know this topic better. We should know more about the speculations made on cryptocurrencies. Catholics may have different opinions about that. There are people who are in favor of it and people who are against it. According to some Catholics, uh, cryptocurrencies are a legitimate uh, financial tool, and according to others, they are no legitimate tool. Both views are compliant with the social doctrine of the church. Before moving on, we should say something. Grugman uh, referred to a certain cryptocurrency, because as we know, there are several cryptocurrencies. So and now I'm going to show you a provisional classification well, first of all, we have Bitcoins and Harcoins. There are certain decentralized cryptocurrencies that are controlled by an algorithm. Then we have stable coins. They are either based on algorithms uh, to uh, control the uh, uh, stabilization of the value, or they may be uh, linked to another asset that may be another cryptocurrency or uh, another asset like gold. Then there are other cryptocurrencies that play certain roles within a certain platform. And then we have the uh, cryptocurrencies of central banks. So these four different types of cryptocurrencies so do not use the same mechanisms. So, so the concerns raised are not always the same. We can deal with all uh, cryptocurrencies at the same time because they're different. Hence, I'm just going to analyze two types of cryptocurrencies. It is morally wrong to have a free banking system based on currencies that are um, minted by individuals. A second uh, concern, the second concern is about the hard coins because like five years ago, only 40% of Bitcoins had been used at least once in a transaction. A speculation is morally wrong. What is the position of the church about these concerns? According to the Holy Scriptures, a human being should fulfill themselves socially and they can do so throughout certain institutions and tools so these institutions may be marriage property and poli politics um, they can also associate with other people in order to fulfill certain results human beings are no angels but they were created by the earth and they depend on the earth in order to fulfill themselves. So human beings, they must use their, their mind to to make good, hence property and economical activities are key. They should serve the family. Non solo la comunità o l'autorità politiche, 
ma gli individui in quanto membri della famiglia il governo deve inseguire in the government must implement tools in order to protect families and the civil society. And this is what uh, Pius uh, the 12 uh, said in his uh, encyclical letter. How does it relate to the two main concerns I mentioned? Hard coins are assets. They are real assets. They are decentralized, they are private, and they are also intangible. It means that they are digital. Moreover, they are FIA fiat currencies. It means that their value might be a zero might be a speculation. The values of the value of a currency depends on its scarcity, but also on the trust people have in the fact that that currency will stay scarce over time. Hard coins fix this problem by fixing al within algorithms a maximum and unchangeable quantity of a currency. Uh, it makes uh, trust uh, foreseeable. Stable coins uh, will not have a stable purchase uh, value. And they make the value of this currency is extremely volatile. So they are digital assets for storage. It is like if there were gold. So they can uh, perform a couple of rules. They are a tool throughout which people can protect their assets against inflation or a big instability within uh, uh, national economies. Similar cases happened recently, both in Argentina and Venezuela. Central banks uh, may use uh, these uh, currencies uh, in order, as a tool to intervene within their internal markets. As decentralized assets uh, and as private assets, they are a legitimate expression of a free association among individuals. Krumen defined these currencies as evil because uh, they undermine the power and the authority of central banks. There are reasons to think that the free banking system favors the economic growth more than other systems. Lawrence White. In questo senso, il dibattito fra Keynes e Friedman di un lato e von Hayek dell'altro rimane aperto. So the debate between von Hayek and Friedman is still open. The social doctrine of the church highlights the due of the government to regulate these institutions so that the common good is safeguarded the common goods and the need for subsidiarity should be taken into account. If we follow the principle of subsidiarity, national bodies must have a minimum intervention within certain mechanisms. This was also highlighted by John Paul II. Bitcoin and hard coins raise a number of concerns because they may uh, facilitate uh, uh, wrong behaviors. So, however, there's no direct link between uh, the cryptocurrencies and uh, bad behaviors. If we want to use bit, um, cryptocurrencies, we need Electricity, of course. Transactions are anonymous. 
However, it's just not even these two points that just defy the reluctancy towards these uh, tools. So of course, we have to find ways to limit the exploitation of uh, cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Transaction costs of cryptocurrencies are quite often low, lower than the traditional tools. They have been useful for uh, migrant workers to transfer their money back home. The issue of morality of cryptocurrency can be questioned because the use of decentralized cryptocurrency uh, may be uh, uh, based on speculation, may depend on speculation, hence uh, uh, being considered as uh, uh, wrongdoing. Non si sono soffermati direttamente sulle speculazioni per poi trattarlo con tutti i dettagli necessari, incluso economici e pecuniari questioni, menzione di speculazioni dieci volte, senza però mai definirla. A più riprese i papi hanno denunciato le speculazioni, spesso però adoprano il termine in un senso improprio, per riferirsi ad attività criminali, quali il narcotraffico, ed ad attività economiche abusive. Ad esempio, il Catechismo della Chiesa Cattolica nel numero 2409 9, condanna ogni speculazione, lucrosa negoziazione. In realtà condanna solo le manipolazioni artificiali dei prezzi a scopo di lucro, lucro ad esempio per via dell'accaparamento. Uh -huh. <coughs> Uh, so uh, the Vatican has never claimed that speculation is a crime. <coughs> it's a sin. It can become a sin in the practice when speculators only think to gains and do not take into consideration the social consequences of, um, of their actions. Speculation for purchase or selling goods aiming at taking advantage of fluctuations of uh, prices and not the value of a good or nor the use. Most of Catholic uh, theologists have uh, declared it morally sinful. It's the search for gain without productive and socially useful uh, work. So, It's an unjust deed and also an act of greed and it pushes the prices of vital goods be beyond their value. A uh, theologist wrote at the beginning of the 1900 that the market is manipulated and the richest are not producing anything, are greedy and uh, are not contributing to the social life. But speculation is a um, zero sum game or a negative sum uh, game if you take into account the transaction costs. <coughs> Theologists focused on the abuses and on externalities without taking into account its social economical impacts. As some authors like James Mju and others uh, emphasized, speculation 
has three main uh, social uh, positive socioeconomical um, consequences. It uh, promotes uh, productivity in the real economy for producers and consumers. Secondly, it makes prices more attractive in a market which is controlled by other speculators. And then it requires looking for partners. And so it brings about more liquidity to some sectors of the economy. Uh, illegal, it, it, speculation is illegal because it has such functions in the case of uh, speculations on altcoins, what is assessed is its value as a reserve value or asset. So cryptocurrencies and uh, weighted speculations can be uh, taken into consideration by Catholicism and I mentioned Centenimus Annus, our first responsibility of the economic um, activities is not um, of the state, but of the individuals and of the groups of society. And as the same book, uh, as we find in the same book, speculation, um, avoid the uh, universal distribution of assets. That's why it requires the presence of the state to preserve the common goods. There are, of course, abuses on speculation in cryptocurrencies. Abuses are also to be found in other economic and financial activities, so are not a, a feature of cryptocurrencies and speculation. They have to be dealt with, but with caution. Abusus, non tolerant usus. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Father Farrell. We had a very rich um, framework. Now we will have a video clip on technical aspects of blockchain, which is the base technology for Bitcoins, NFT and cryptocurrencies. And it's one of the most innovative uh, characteristic of those tools. And this technology can also be used for other and very diverse um, uses. Also in positive sense, attributing value, digital value, thanks to a shared ledger and an interface. Blockchain technology offers several advantages for security, transparency, and decentralization. Its main features make it a technology which is cross-sectional and adaptable to many sectors that will change our life completely, the way we transfer data, information, and assets. Uh, technologically, blockchain is a ledger, is a common uh, shared ledger capable of processing uh, inputs, uh, transactions through pre-established rules, which is the protocol. All this is done without the coordination of a central entity, but with the coordinated work of volunteers cooperating for maintaining the technology. One of the, more, the major strengths of blockchain is cross-sectionality because it rewrites the way in which transactions are performed. And when transactions regard many sectors, tech, uh, the technology of blockchain can be applied to any sector. But it started from finance because the first uh, concrete application of a blockchain is in the payment systems. Bitcoin has uh, started a new way to transfer value. Uh, the uh, most famous case uh, of blockchain is the transfer of digital assets or cryptocurrencies, the 
blockchain technology is the real protagonist of Bitcoin revolution. Let's try to understand what are the unique features that make blockchain technique an unprecedented um, uh, innovation. First of all, decentralization, because uh, central banks and entities are coordination central entities. They coordinate, uh, they coordinate um, transactions and uh, are a grantor of their value. Blockchain technology removes uh, the central entity from the equation and the responsibility for control and management of transactions are distributed on the community of participants of the network. So on one side, we have a democratization process because the power is redistributed. And on the other side, we have a removal of the of fail, the point of failure. So the blockchain technology solves the problem and risk that information can get lost or damaged because they are distributed all over the community. Each participant has um, an identical copy of the blockchain ledger. Another important feature of blockchain technology is transparency. Every transaction, in fact, is visible because it's public. When we say um, <clears throat> digital uh, assets, we know that there is a transaction ID in a block explorer. Every I transaction ID is unique. We are often said that the blockchain is resistant to censorship because uh, differently from banks or uh, entities that can block uh, accounts, the blockchain technology offer a completely different uh, model based on complete transparency and public data. In this sense, all participants have to obey a protocol. So a number of um, agreed upon rules so that there is a positive and proactive cooperation towards an objective. And so when a, a transaction is made, it's impossible to cancel it because once the technology registers the transactions, that they cannot be changed. For this reason, often it's associated with the uh, concept of truth. Uh, and data cannot be cancelled or altered and, and manipulated. So the data registered is the original one. And then security. The security of blockchain is given by three elements, cryptography, unchangeability, and consensus algorithm. Uh, the integrity of cryptocurrencies is not in the security of cryptocurrencies in itself, themselves, but uh, of the technology enabling them, so blockchain. We were talking about possible positive uses of this technology, and now we have a connection from Bologna, a young parish priest, um, Don Baraldi, who is very passionate about this technology, and he is lucky enough to have a parish church with um, a very significant cultural heritage. We have Karachi work in his church, which is a masterpiece of the 1500. And so he decided to create NFT for the works he had in his parish church to show how art and churches can still mm, meet innovative forms of art. Please, uh, Don Baraldi, you have the floor. Let tell you tell us something about it. Can I share my screen, or or maybe you can uh, you can share the presentation I sent to you? Did you hear us? Yes, we're checking. For us, it's the same, so you can do it. You can share the screen. Okay. 
Well, first of all, we'd like to thank the uh, Pontifical Ateneo for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I'm with Cristina, uh, who is our web manager and our graphic designer. And without her, we wouldn't realize anything. The topic is the ethical dimension. So I'd like to tell you our experience oh, very honestly and simply with the advantages and disadvantages that we encountered and identified. Our experience is based on the protection and enhancement of the cultural heritage. We are lucky because we have a very rich parish church in this sense. We have more than 200, 2,500 records, uh, artistic records. And so we, we think we're lucky. This is our church. It's an historic, historical parish church of dating back to the 16th century. It's very close to a center collecting um, uh, the works of Arcano that together with Pope Montini were the first to propose to contemporary artists to interpret sacred art. And so there are two main collections. One is Lercavo collection and another one, which is the Montini um, collection in Brescia. So this is our parish church and we have a website where you can see the entire catalog of NFT that we crea created. Before showing you the NFT, uh, we'll tell you something of uh, our journey to creating NFTs. So we started from the desire to the will of not leaving classical art in the past. So when Annibale Carracci painted this work, which is very uh, famous, the art was uh, co contemporary. And it became famous because it's uh, innovative in the style, in the way uh, of, in which body and bodies and light are represented. This is the crucifixion of Jesus. And we have uh, the Virgin Mary and Saint Francis because we had the Franciscan uh, friars in the church. Starting from this, and um, because of the nearby collection of works of art, we decided to, to interpret something of the contemporary art, so to make art contemporary again. So first of all, we purchased with fundraising uh, this work of um, Ettore Frani, a contemporary artist that was commissioned for uh, the visit of Pope Francis to Bologna in 2017. It was then exhibited at the Lercaro collection and we uh, tried to purchase it. The artist was very happy because it was happy that it could be um, put in a sacred space. That's the work of art as it was initially. We decided to, to promote a dialogue with contemporary art and we promoted two uh, exhibitions of an artist, Giulietta Geller, working with paintings and sculpture. And so on the occasion of Valentine's Day, which is one <clears throat> of the saints of our parish church, in 
so there were contemporary art installations on love uh, around uh, Valentine's Day and during Easter period and the works uh, represented Easter moments. And all these statues were put in the sacred space of the church the next year. We had another contemporary art exhibition. <clears throat> which uh, this exhibition was um, was exhibited in Faenza, Milan, Bergamo, Camaldoli, and then Bologna. Uh, many artists performed. Uh, one was Ettore Frani, and then we the other two, Daniela Novello, producing this table with baskets and bread. And the contrast is made by uh, the, uh, the materials used, which are very heavy. And Luca producing these statues are made of bread. And here we have two migrants asylum seekers. The next year, we continued this relation with contemporary art and we asked a professional artist um, working in Berlin to uh, paint um, on the wall of the yard. And this was in the middle of the pandemic. And then we wondered what we could do for 2021. Considering then we had uh, difficulties because of the pandemics, pandemic. So I also teach a fundamental theology, uh, studying uh, methodological basics, epistemology, and the relation with contemporary uh, culture. So after an analysis on digital revolution, I met, um, I addressed this uh, topic of NFT. I tried to get into details and I understood that it could be an instrument to enhance our cultural heritage. I shared it with Christina, who has the technical skills and the graphic skills to do what I had in mind with the Pastoral Council of Economic Affairs, I tried to understand if a small investment could be made. It was really, really little. We approached, we studied, and so we acquired some skills, and we were the first, the first religious community to express something about the religious uh, heritage through NFT. We, we tried many stores, but it was the, the, at the beginning of the NFT boom. So in important stores, um, like Raptor.com, NFT. You needed to be artists and to have a portfolio of works of art to get a registration. Whereas on the Mintable uh, website, it was possible to create, to create NFTs with packages. By purchasing packages, we immediately realized that <clears throat> on Ethereum network for us as beginners without knowing the outcome and without risking the heritage of the parish church, it was too expensive. So we, we changed another store on another blockchain, less 
demanding, which is Zilliqa, which enabled us to uh, create our NFTs at uh, no cost because there was an offer for the first the first store and, and NFTs. This is the image of a store. It's not an NFT. It's an image giving the title to the first store on, on which we created our NFT. We, uh, we made a word of uh, a game of words, and so we uh, uh, called it a classical unchained, reminding of the word blockchain. Of course, this is a picture of our of our church in a digital way. The first, our first NFT was not the crucifixion of Annibale Carracci, but it's a work by Gaetano Gandolfi, an artist uh, of the um, early uh, 18th uh, century. You can see the original work uh, on the left. It's also, there is also a miniature. We, all, we just um, modified a little bit uh, the veil and the mantle of uh, Jesus. We, we called it Mary Gold and White, and through uh, gold and white, we wanted to un emphasize the purity of the subjects. This is the first, the very first NFT that we created. It was um, sold at a high price, and it was bought by a collectionist. And then we created on the crucifixion of Annibale Carracci. We maintained the original and then uh, something new. We called and white again, emphasize, emphasizing the uh, city of Bologna. And the topic of this um, change is the idea of a glory which manifests itself not on an ancient city but on the contemporary city and so the title is glory and the city and we we sold this one as well <laughs> And in the, in the collection, there, is, there are the, the five masterpieces that we have in our church. The third is, gives you the idea of the project that we are trying to promote. Uh, this is the martyr of St. Christina. You can see it small on your on the on the right, and we transformed it as um, as a um, as a present, as a as a um, gift uh, for women, women who, in regardless of their social status or condition, are uh, uh, expressed. Uh, themselves or le left um, a contribution in the history of human beings. And then we had another work. This is another masterpiece of our church. <clears throat> it's a classical representation of the sacred family. We were inspired by the golden, the golden color and the white. And there is an intimate portrait of the sacred family. And we reflected upon parenthood. That's why we gave this title. Uh, there, is, um, there is the... Um, right hand of uh, Joseph and the, right, the hand of Jesus, which are 
very close and so it's um we it's a reflection on uh, different ways of understanding and conceiving parenthood and uh, how parenthood has changed over time and so this is also connected to gender considerations then there is a second uh, store it's classical holly pop So something reminding the classical art, but reinterpreted. I'll show you some examples. This is an example of San Francis. Uh, so you see the original on, on the right. And we made it a tribute to this um, uh, sensitivity to the, to the world and the environment. And then we have the uh, dinner of M. Mouse, uh, which and it's uh, reinterpreted with these bright colors, um, emphasizing the idea of the importance of hosting and the welcoming character. This work is very interesting because uh, it was painted by a woman, Lucia Torelli Casalieni, dating back to 1750. And then there is a third store. We had black and white uh, paintings, like in this example. This is a work on resurrection and for emphasizing uh, the resurrection of the baby, uh, uh, there is a reflection on life. And we also created a small series of uh, collectibles So representing a smart Christian community, modern contemporary smart uh, Christian community. So you can see uh, a kid doing catechism because a catech there is an educator, there is a teenager. The idea is uh, that you can be young and modern without losing your soul. So there is a this uh, girl is reading a book in the park, and and then there is a person working in the parish church, changing a lamp, uh, emphasizing the fact that there are hidden people, people behind the scenes, maintaining the churches and the communities. And then there is the parish church, because the Christian community, it's a community where you can be listened to and you can freely express. This uh, collection is a work in process. And then we have another store. We have a special series that we like it very much. It's called Leadership for Today. It's um, individual paintings. And we use them to reflect on, on Christian leadership. So the uh, work that we show is San Carlo Borromeo in a um, very modern and dark Milan. You know that uh, San Carlo Borromeo is the patron of Milan. And this work is titled Inside the Darkness. He's kneeing at the, um, in front of the cross. So a uh, contemporary leader in a um, central city for finance economy like Milan, is called upon to bring light so that darkness do not does not prevail on the social on the human life so we have 21 nft from artworks five collectibles they will become they will rise to 10 we sold at 12 and the revenues were 28,000, say 635 silica. So silica 
has been halved. It's a very small crypto cryptocurrency, but it enabled us to do everything without investing anything. Now we are thinking about um, redempting, redeeming <clears throat> them in an ethical way, asking also um, our experts, economic aspects. Um, so uh, ANSA published uh, news on uh, on our initiative, so we have attached the links on this news. Even online papers um, echoed the ANSA news. And also, thanks to your invitation, we were also interviewed on uh, national newspapers. For the future, we would like to use the network of Ethereum because it enables uh, uh, payments with credit cards. So it would um, make this experience easier. Uh, we would like to create more NFTs and we would like to increase the awareness of the community on the project in contemporary art. Thank you. Penso che abbia anche suscitato molta curiosità questa esperienza. Thank Pitarlo. you, Don Davide. Per anche qualche domanda, ma è incuriosiva ad esempio che storicamente la Chiesa... I was struck with what you said. You said that the Church used to be a great purchaser of works of art, while now uh, there are several entities uh, that uh, try to buy these works of art. Quite often I've had the possibility to take part into the press conferences of the ECB. And in fact, I was uh, um, positively struck by the video about cryptocurrencies and about uh, the responsibility of central banks of managing cryptocurrencies. The central banks cannot uh, make mistakes. In fact, we've seen these days that in Turkey, due to uh, questionable um, actions of the central bank, the uh, national currency uh, devalued and the um, corporations had to close their offices and their shops. So uh, this is maybe a point that uh, Professor Traficante may uh, delve into. It's about the relationship within the uh, cryptocurrency, the currencies and uh, political economy. You have the floor. Ah, ce l'hanno loro, ce l'hanno loro la presentazione. Buonasera a tutti. Eh, grazie intanto. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to UPRA, thanks to the European University of Rome, and uh, to, thanks to Roberto Serafini, who uh, asked me to take part into this interesting initiative. I'm going to talk about some of the issues raised by Professor Sacco. 